Well, hello, Coach Ariel and Coach Pressy. It's a blessing to be here with you again on Kingdom Talk. Coming to you all the way from the Dallas Fourth Metroplex in Texas, USA. And it's a privilege to be here to share with you the good news of the gospel of the kingdom of God. You know, my late mentor, Dr. Miles Monroe, who had the privilege of knowing over 20 some odd years and in the latter part of his life, having the opportunity to teach the kingdom of God with him in kingdom training seminars where he was teaching us how to teach others to teach the kingdom of God. He made many visits here to the Dallas Fourth Metroplex, and he would often say, uh, I greet you from the Bahamas, the place where God lives. And I would tell him, God must like vacationing here in Dallas, Fort Worth, because you're here often. Hallelujah. Well, praise God. I trust that you're ready to get deep into the word of God because the word that God has placed upon my heart is one that I believe that will bless you today and for days to come. So, Father, I lift up each and every person on the sound of my voice that we have ears to hear what your spirit is saying to us. Speak to our hearts, Lord God, and communicate revelation that will give us understanding and motivation to pursue your kingdom in great ways. In Jesus' name I pray that your word will go out and not return again void, cause it to prosper where until you send it. Amen and amen. Well, I want you to turn with me in your Bibles, if you haven't, to Luke chapter 16 and verse 16. And for those of you that may not have a Bible, I want to read it for you. It reads, the law and the prophets were unto John. Since that time, the kingdom of God is preached and every man presseth into it. Now, these are the words of Jesus. Jesus said that. He said the law and the prophets were unto John since that time, since what time? Since the time of the law, since the time of the prophets, up until John, he says the kingdom of God is preached. Jesus came to usher in a whole new age for us, and it's the age of the kingdom. So my message today is kingdom now and kingdom coming, because there is a kingdom now. And Jesus demonstrated that he came to bring the kingdom. He came to give us access to a kingdom that had been lost. And I tell you, that's the search of mankind's heart today, looking for that kingdom that was lost. But Jesus came and recovered it, and he wants us to rediscover it so that we can enter and press into that kingdom. Now, he said press because there are two births as it relates to kingdom life and living. There's natural birth. You got to be born naturally. He told Nicodemus, except a person is born of water and of spirit. He said that in John chapter three, he cannot be born again. Nicodemus says, shall you enter a second time into mother's womb and be born? And Jesus said, no. He said, he's talking about spiritual birth. He said, to be born of the spirit. In other words, to be born from above, not to be born from below. What do you mean above? Above into the realm of the third heaven where God is, where the throne of God is, and where Jesus is at the right hand of the Father, where he ever lived to make intercession for us. But he sent the Holy Spirit back, who is the governor of the kingdom, to live inside each and every one of our lives so that we can have the kingdom within us. Uh, Paul said that the kingdom of God is not meat or drink, but what is it? It's righteousness, it's peace, and it's joy in the Holy Ghost. He said, the law and the prophets were unto John. Since that time, the kingdom of God is preached and every man presses into it. When a woman is given birth to a baby, she has to press. She pushes and she pushes until that baby comes in. Well, I tell you, he was symbolically speaking of a birthing process from above. Now, he says the law and the prophets. Now, what is the law? The law is the first five books of the Bible. It is from Genesis to Deuteronomy. It's what God gave Moses. Moses wrote those first five books of the Bible, and God gave him a revelation of a coming nation. Oh, let me say that again. God gave Moses a revelation of a coming nation. And then he says the law and the prophets were unto John. The prophets from Isaiah 
to Malachi to John. We know that the Old Testament is from Genesis to Malachi, but then there was one last prophet that came on the scene during Old Testament times. He was the forerunner of Jesus Christ. He was a man sent from God whose name was John. Yeah, he was sent from God. And you know the story how his parents was, were old and well stricken in years and they gave birth to him in his old age. He was not named after his father, Zachariah, because God gave him a name and his name was John. And his purpose was to prepare the way for Jesus Christ. So Jesus understood this revelation because Jesus was mentored by the law and Jesus was mentored by the prophets. He understood the law of the prophets. That's why he was able to say that the Ten Commandments were summed up into two. Love your neighbor as you love yourself and the love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, thy mind, thy soul and thy strength. Jesus understood the law and the prophets because Jesus came and manifested every aspect of fivefold ministry. That's why he was able to call 12 apostles. That's right. They were disciples, disciplined followers who later became apostles, the apostles of the Lamb. But he's given some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers for the equipping of the saints for the work of ministry. Because after the apostles of the Lamb, he ascended, he led captivity captive, he gave gifts unto men. And those gifts that he gave were governmental gifts, apostolic, prophetic, pastoral, teaching uh, for the equipping of the saints for the work of the ministry and shepherd teachers, which are pastor teachers. So Jesus was unpacking some revelation. The law and the prophets were unto John. Uh, Matthew chapter three, verse one and two says, in those days came John the Baptist. Jesus said a lot of prophets were unto John. So what's the law? The law was the first five books of the Bible and then the prophets were from Isaiah all the way to, let's say, John, because John came with a prophetic message too. You know what it was? Repent, <laughs> for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. He said, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. My coffee cup is at hand. So I reached out, picked it up, and took me a sip of what's in the cup. Are you hearing me? because it's at hand, it's right here. John came to say, to repent, to have a change of mind, followed by a change of heart, a change of lifestyle, to come back to the original position and place that God had ordained for man. Pent means the top, re means to come back. Are you hearing me? Get back on top, he's saying, for the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven has arrived. And then it wasn't many days after that, that John the Baptist, after he was baptizing unto repentance, saw Jesus and said, behold, the Lamb of God who came to take away the sins of the world. Now, why the Lamb of God? Because a lamb was the perfect sacrifice for the sin of man. But Jesus was very much man and Jesus was very much God. Though he were a son, yet learned he obedience by the things that he suffered. The Bible says that he was tempted in all points like as we are, cause he was a man, but yet without sin, he did not yield to the temptation and he did not sin. That's why he was able to give his life as a sacrifice on Calvary's cross. Because it says that cursed is every man that hangeth upon a tree. Let's deal with this lamb aspect. Jesus came to connect us to the Abrahamic covenant, because God is a God of covenant. God cuts covenant with us and God keeps his covenant with us. Well, he had a covenant with Adam and Eve in the garden. That's the Adamic covenant. And then after uh, the earth was destroyed and all of mankind was destroyed with the exception of Noah, who's a righteous man before God and his family, God had a covenant with Noah. And the Noahic covenant was just pretty much of reinstitution of the Adamic covenant. And he told him as long as the earth remained, there would be seed, time and harvest. And literally he was to be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth with mankind once again. 
So we go from the Adamic covenant. We go from the Adamic covenant to the Noahic covenant, the Noahic covenant. And then we get to the Abrahamic covenant because God had a covenant with Abraham. God told Abraham to take his son, Isaac, his only begotten son, his begotten son of his wife, uh, of his wife, Sarah, whose name was Sarai, who God's changed his, her name to Sarah. And God had a covenant with Abraham and with the covenant that he had with him, he told him he was going to make him a father of many nations. Well, Abraham offered his son Isaac as a sacrifice. And you know the rest of the story. He did not have to sacrifice him because before he lifted up the knife to sacrifice him, God provided a sacrifice. As a matter of fact, his son Isaac looked at him and said, okay, now father, I've done this routine with you before and we're going to offer a sacrifice, but where is the sacrifice? Well, Abraham had a prophetic word spoken to him that he spoke out of his spirit. He said, God shall provide himself a lamb. God will provide himself a lamb. Well, Abraham went, got ready to sacrifice his son and he heard something rumbling in the thicket. And when he looked, behold, there was an acceptable sacrifice, which was not a lamb, but it was a ram. Why? Because God had spoke to Abraham, the father of many nations, that if he would offer his son Isaac, that he would bless him to be a blessing. And you know what happened? He was able to use that ram and he and the lad came back just as he said, I and the lad are going to go up and we will be back. And he told the lad, Isaac, God will provide himself a lamb. But that wasn't a lamb that was in the thicket. It was a ram. So where did the lamb come from? Abraham saw into the future. Are you hearing me? The Bible says that God preached the gospel to Abraham before time. <laughs> are you hearing me? And that was the before time right there in the Old Testament right there in the law. God spoke to Abraham and told him that he would provide a lamb. And John the Baptist, the last of the Old Testament prophets, said, Behold, the Lamb of God who has come to take away the sins of the world. Wow, isn't that powerful? <laughs> so that's the lamb aspect of Jesus that connects us with the Abrahamic covenant. And the Abrahamic covenant has to do with God blessing us to be a blessing. But how can he do this? By being a part of his kingdom. You see, the kingdom was on God's mind because the kingdom was a part of God's design. The whole message of the Bible is about God, his land, and his people. It's about the king, the kingdom, which is the king's domain, and his royal offspring, you and I. The Bible tells us in John 1, 12, but as many as received him, Jesus, the Lamb of God, who came to take away the sins of the world, to them gave he the power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe upon his name. So John preached, repent, for the kingdom is at hand. Behold, the Lamb of God, who comes to take away the sin of the world. He baptized Jesus. The Spirit descended upon Jesus in bodily form like a dove. He was led by the Spirit into the wilderness where he was tempted by the devil, 40 days and 40 nights. Luke tells us that he went full of the spirit, but when he came out of the wilderness, he came in the power of the spirit. Why? Because God anointed Jesus. How did he anoint Jesus? By the things that he went through in the wilderness, that anointing was pressed out of him, just like olives release the oil when they go through the press. The anointing was processed when Jesus went through the press and he came out of the wilderness, not just, are you hearing me, full of the spirit, but powerful. And then he went into the temple where he began to read the book of Isaiah because it was his time to read. The Bible said as it was his custom, he went to church. Now, I know we've been sheltered in place all over the world. Uh, we've had to deal with a pandemic in this season, in this hour. But the Bible says to forsake not yourselves, the assembly of us together as the like manner of some is. And I know we're beginning to assemble more and more as God has given us victory over 
this pandemic in this present season and hour. And God is going to deliver us to have more public assemblies. But in the book of Acts, it said they met publicly as well as from house to house. So Jesus went to the synagogue, the Bible says, as was his custom. So it's good for us to go to the local church as it though it was Jesus's custom. But when we go there, there's a difference between the church and the kingdom. The kingdom is all encompassing. Are you hearing me? The kingdom goes into every segment of society. And you and I as kingdom citizens are trained to rule and reign in those different spheres of influence, whether it's government, whether it's education, are you hearing me? Where it's entertainment, whether it's arts, you know, and entertainment, whether it's, are you hearing me? Even the church where we are anointed and appointed to go into the world. He says, this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached as a sign and then the end shall come. That's the best that's yet to come that we're going to tell you more about. So when Jesus came out of that wilderness, the Bible says that in Mark, well, Matthew chapter four, verse 17, Matthew four seventeen, from that time, after he was baptized by John, after he fasted and prayed in the wilderness, from that time, Jesus began to preach what John preached. What did John preach? He said, repent for the kingdom is now. <laughs> so that's kingdom now. John preached kingdom now. The kingdom has arrived right now. So Jesus started preaching the message of John. Repent for the kingdom has arrived. Amen. That's Matthew 4, 17. So John preached kingdom now. And if John preached kingdom now, if Jesus preached kingdom now, we need to preach kingdom now. He said, this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached. Jesus preached kingdom now, but he didn't just deal with kingdom now. He also dealt with kingdom coming. I'm talking to you today about kingdom now and kingdom coming. You see, all of my mentors in the faith, they preached the kingdom. From the time I very first started preaching the gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, I was introduced to it as the gospel of the kingdom of God. First message I preached was Matthew 13, 44. Where the kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hid in the field, which a man, for the joy of finding it, went and sold all that he had to come back and purchase that field. I literally live that. I had a total change of life, and I began to preach the gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. In March 2021, it'll be 41 years. So I praise God for his faithfulness for these last 41 years. My mentor, mentor me in the kingdom of God. He preached the John the Baptist type message, turn a burn. He preached the gospel of the kingdom of God. And the only way you can get in is by being born again, by knowing Jesus Christ as your savior and as your Lord. He taught me about lordship, the lordship of Christ. If Jesus is not Lord of all, he's not Lord at all. I met him as savior as four or five years old. I was around four and a half years old, but then when my first mentor, who was my father into the gospel ministry of Jesus Christ, he introduced the lordship aspect and I totally sold out because I saw the kingdom like I never saw it before. But then after seeing it, I had to enter into the kingdom by understanding the principles, concepts and laws. Then my journey began in kingdom understanding and revelation. And every one of my mentors preached the kingdom of God. And then I came upon this master teacher who I call the apostle of kingdom recovery and rediscovery, Dr. Miles Monroe, who studied the kingdom, the majority of his ministry. I tell you, and he unlocked keys and principles and truths and taught them like he was from another world. Actually, he was. He was from the kingdom of God, the same world that you and I are to be born into if you're not already. The kingdom of God is a nation. He's, it's a nation within every nation that you and I can go in with occupation. That's why he said, occupy until I come. We can take the kingdom nation and cause it to be in occupation in whatever nation of the world that we're in, right there in the Philippines. 
from that point, you can take the kingdom to the four uh, corners of the world. Not actually corners, all the way around the world, but north, south, east, and west. That's where we get the concept of corners. And geometrically, you can see that within that. Well, I won't give you a physics lessons today, uh, but let's get into this. <laughs> so that's what kingdom now is. We have a kingdom now, and we have something to look forward to. <laughs> that's kingdom coming. Come on, say it. Kingdom now. Kingdom coming. Kingdom now. Kingdom coming. We have a kingdom now. And we have a kingdom coming, something to look forward to. There is a kingdom now and a kingdom coming. Uh, but the kingdom coming must be viewed as now, but not quite yet kingdom. In other words, there's a kingdom now. And then there's one that's not quite yet. There's one that's still coming. So what is this aspect of it? Well, the kingdom of God is a literal place. The kingdom of heaven, let me say that, is a literal place. That's where Jesus is. But the kingdom of God is the manifestation of the kingdom of heaven in the place where we are. Are you hearing me? The kingdom of heaven has dimensions. The kingdom of heaven is in another realm and it has dimensions. Matter of fact, God gave Moses a pattern of what the tabernacle should look like. And it was modeled after what was in heaven. That's why Jesus told us to pray Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done. Where? on earth as it is in heaven. But for it to be done on earth, it must be inside of earth because the Bible says that we have this treasure in earth and vessels. There were five different expressions of tabernacles within the scripture. There was the tabernacle of Moses. There was the tabernacle of David. Listen to this. There was the temple of Solomon, not tabernacle. But he says the tabernacle of David would be rebuilt. But in order for it to be re rebuilt, we had to have Jesus as our tabernacle because the word became flesh. John chapter one, verse 14 and tabernacle among us. And John said, we beheld his glory as of the only begotten of the father, full of grace and truth. Tabernacle of Moses, tabernacle of David. Everybody had access to the tabernacle of David. And it was Jesus, our tabernacle. And Jesus, he died for us on Calvary's cross because the kingdom has a cross in it. The kingdom has a horizontal connection to God, reconnects us to God. Then it has a vertical, our relationship one with another. In order to have a cross, you can have a vertical and a horizontal that we connect with one another because of our love for God. By this shall all men know that you're my disciples, that you have love one for another. Wow, this message is taking us somewhere. So kingdom coming refers to the second coming of Christ after his incarnation. But let me tell you this about something yet to come. Well, see, in my hand right here is an iPhone 10 Max. In this hand is an iPhone 7. 7 comes before 10. I had this one for a while. Yep, this is an iPhone 7. But there was something yet to come. And guess what it was? It was an iPhone 10. And so this was my now at what time, and this was my yet to be or coming. Are you hearing me? But now it has come and now I have both. There's going to be a day that we have what we have now and we're going to have the rest of it and it's coming. Are you hearing me? What we have now and then what we have later that's coming. I'll show you what I'm talking about. Well, uh, the kingdom coming refers to the second coming of Christ after his incarnation. Kingdom now has reference to the first coming of Christ. Because Christ came born of a virgin the first time. That's his incarnation. That's him becoming a carnate being. That's him becoming very much God and very much man clothed inside of a flesh and blood body. And then that was his first coming. But he tells us that he's coming again. He's gone to prepare a place for us that where he is there, we may be also. Are you hearing me? Oh, that's a whole nother revelation. There's a coming there and there is a there also now because we have a connection to heaven through the person of the Holy Spirit who is the governor of the kingdom. Wow, that's a whole nother message too. <laughs> so now it refers to the first advent of Christ. That's his first coming. Advent means that there's something that's finally here that's yet to come. Are you hearing me? He was coming and then he came finally. But then kingdom coming is the future of what's coming. 
So there's kingdom now and there's kingdom coming. Kingdom now is his first advent. Kingdom coming is his second advent. Kingdom coming refers to the second coming of Christ after his incarnation, after his death, burial, and resurrection. He ascended back to the Father and angels appeared and said, the same Jesus that you saw leave in this manner, ascending into the clouds, is coming back in like manner. Wow, that's kingdom coming. Tell somebody, I have something to look forward to. Christ has come once and he's coming again. Why did Christ come the first time? For the son of man came to seek and to save that which was lost. Luke 19 and 10 says that Adam lost the kingdom. So Jesus had to come as the son of man to seek and to save what was lost. What do you mean Adam lost a kingdom? Well, in Genesis chapter one, verse 27, God said, let us make man after our image. That's the spiritual man after our likeness. That's the function of man. God quickens things and calls things that be not as though they were. So God spoke and got what he said. You and I need to speak and get what we say when we speak God's words. Because faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. What you hear is what you see is what you say is what you do. So Adam lost that kingdom. He said, let us make man after our image, spirit, after our likeness, function, and let them have dominion. That word dominion in Hebrew is rada. It means to rule. It means to have dominion. It means to dominate or to tread down. You can look in your Strong's Concordance, 7287. It simply says that. Well, that was God's original plan for man. Man messed up the plan. And, you know, as a result of that, lifespans decrease. Adam was once, listen to this, immortal. But then he became a mortal. Mortality, death entered into his life. But prior to that, Adam was immortal. He could have chose the tree of life instead of the tree of knowledge of good and evil because life was in the midst of the garden. We always have a choice to choose life. What are you going to choose? Choose life. Well, that was God's original plan. And it got all the way down to Moses and the children of Israel after Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob are you hearing the story? And that nation Israel were put into Egyptian bondage, slavery, and captivity. And God sent a deliverer. And God has sent a deliverer unto us today. What do you want to deliver us from? The kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son, which is the kingdom of light, which is the kingdom of God, which is the kingdom of heaven on earth through the kingdom of God, his rule and reign through his royal offspring, as we receive the king of the kingdom and he dominates our flesh and blood bodies and where we tread upon in this life and exercise principles, concepts, and laws of the kingdom, we do what God's original attempt for the children of Israel was that he told them in Exodus 19 and six, after they were released from Egyptian slavery and bondage, he says, and you shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. Exodus 19 and 6. Why? Because the Old Testament is the New Testament contained. The New Testament is the Old Testament explained. The Old Testament is the New Testament concealed. The New Testament is the Old Testament revealed. Well, where was he revealing that at? First Peter 2, 9. He was talking about the kingdom of God being a nation within our nation. The Bible refers to the church as a nation. As a matter of fact, when he says you shall be a kingdom of priests and a holy nation, a kingdom of priests and a holy nation, you shall be a mamlaka. That's what the word kingdom is in the Hebrew of priests, a mamlaka of priests and a holy nation. These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel because that's what he wanted it to be, a kingdom of priests. Well, that was fulfilled in Christ because Peter went on to get the revelation to communicate this situation. We are now a chosen generation, 1 Peter 2, 9, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people that should show forth the praises of him who's called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. Old Testament contained, New Testament explained. Old Testament concealed that revelation. 
New Testament revealed that revelation in Christ. The kingdom of God is a nation. It's a nation within every nation. Matthew 21, 43. Therefore, I say unto you, the kingdom of God, the mamlaka, the uh, basilia of God shall be taken from you and given to a nation, bringing forth the fruits thereof. And that's you and I, that holy nation, to bring forth fruits that are meat for repentance. We are the nation born from above to bring forth fruits, Luke 11 and 2. And he said unto them, when you pray, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Say that when you pray. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, as in heaven, so in earth. Matthew 24, 14, Jesus said, this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for witness unto all nations, and then the end shall come. In other words, our nation should be a witness to other nations. Whatever nation you're in, are you hearing me? He wants the kingdom nation to witness to that nation so that he can gather up all of the sheep for the nation of the kingdom and separate the goats. Well, that's what's coming. Listen to me. The separation of the sheep and the goats. Matthew 28, 19 says, Go ye therefore and teach what? Here it is again. All nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. All nations have to do with people groups. Philippines, Brazil, Italy, Europe, Asia, all nations, Australia, Canada, United States of America, all nations, bringing them into a reality of who the Father is, who the Son is, and who the governor of the kingdom is, Holy Spirit, to live in us, that we can legislate the authority of heaven on earth, his kingdom come, his will be done. Are you hearing me? As diplomats, ambassadors, and citizens from another place, training, ruling, and reigning. His kingdom coming. Isaiah saw it. Isaiah 65, 17. As I come to a quick close. For behold, I create new heavens and a new earth, and the former shall not be remembered nor come into mind. Now listen, I didn't come to deal with eschatological stuff uh, to, to argue about a rapture, where this going to be uh, before the tribulation, pre-trib, where it's going to be in the middle of the great tribulation, mid-trib, or where it's going to be after great tribulation, which is post-trib, those theological terms. I didn't come to debate nor argue those. People always ask me, what's your position? Are you pre, mid, or post? You know what I tell them? I'm pan. You know what that means? It's going to all pan out. Why is it going to pan out? Because I'm getting this gospel of the kingdom out and I'm ready for him to come whenever he does. If it's, it, are you hearing what I'm trying to say? But there's some other things coming. What's coming? His kingdom is coming because Isaiah saw a new heaven and a new earth. When is it coming? Pre, mid, or post? I don't worry about that. It's going to pan out, but I am into the gospel of the kingdom. Now I got my opinion, but my opinion don't matter. I've studied all three different views. My opinion don't matter, but what matters? This gospel of the kingdom being preached now and what's coming. Then John said, I saw a great white throne and him that sat on it for whose face of the earth, the heaven fled away and was found no place for them. And I saw the dead small and great and stand before God and the books were, were open and another book, which was open, which was the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. He's talking about two different books, the book of life. And then he's going to talk about another book. Listen to this, according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead, which were in it, and death and hell were delivered up, the dead which were in them, and they were judged, every man according to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life, because he who has the son has life, was cast into the lake of fire for the second death because they were born once and not born again. So they had to die twice. If you're born once, <laughs> wow, you're going to die twice. But if you're born twice, born from above and born from your mother's womb, you're going to only die once to be absent from your body, to be present with the Lord. It's appointed unto man once to die after that, the judgment that's for a believer in Christ Jesus and all of us, because all of us shall not sleep or die. Are you hearing me? 
but we all will be changed. That's what we're looking for. That's what's coming. Kingdom coming. That's what I'm talking about. That's Revelation 20, 11 through 15. Then Revelation 21 and 1 says, And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. Old Testament, Isaiah 65, 17, New Testament, Revelation 21, 1. Contain and explain. John 20, John said this in Revelation 21, 2. And I, John, <laughs> saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God, out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And Paul said in 2 Corinthians 5.10, for those that die knowing Jesus or they're alive and remain when a trumpet God sounds, which is kind of reminded me of the Feast of Trumpets that's doing tabernacles, because I told you about <laughs> three tabernacles, Tabernacle of Moses, Tabernacle of David, Jesus our tabernacle, the fourth one, our bodies, tabernacles and temples of God. But here's the fifth tabernacle. <laughs> Five is grace, faith. Are you hearing me? The fifth tabernacle is the new Jerusalem <laughs> coming down from heaven. And I tell you, there's a great white throne judgment for believers in Christ. And you're going to be judged according to what you, you were called to do, according to your purpose. That's the judgment seat of Christ. And then there's the great white throne judgment for non-believers those who did not do the work that they were supposed to do and the books recorded what you were supposed to do and you must line up with it in accordance to what you did. Father, I pray for every person on the sound of my voice. We realize that your kingdom is available for us now. I pray that those on the sound of my voice who have not received your kingdom will accept you as Savior and Lord Jesus. Cause them to be born again right now. Holy Spirit, renew them as they repent and come back on top, give you all of the sin, the shame, the sorrow, the sickness, their sadness, and receive life and life more abundantly and receive your kingdom now, which is not shaken in the midst of everything that's being shaken in this world in order for those things that cannot be shaken to remain so that we await your glorious appearance and coming when we shall not all sleep but changed when the trump of God sound and the dead in Christ rise and we that alive remain are caught up together to meet them in the clouds in your coming kingdom that we're experiencing now as we rule and reign and train with you on earth as it is in heaven. Amen and amen. God bless you. It was great being with you again. Kingdom now and kingdom coming. This is real, and he wants to manifest it through you as the church, the ecclesia, the legislative authorities, ambassadors, and citizens of heaven on earth. God bless you from Fort Worth, Texas, USA. See you again next time.